Welcome back to another video where we're going to talk about differentiability and specifically this video is going to walk you through how to find derivatives in your calculator and so there's a lot of really good information in here um, that's going to be helpful and knowing how to use your calculator quickly and effectively on your AP exam is going to save you time. Uh, remember that your AP exam does include some calculator and some non-calculator questions and um, using your calculator properly is uh, going to save you a ton of time on your AP exam. Uh, now this video will focus on the TI-84. There is another video by another um, YouTube person out there who uh, created a video specifically for TI-89s. So if you're a TI-89 user, you can watch through this video and um, a lot of the keystrokes are the same, but your screen is going to look a little different. And so there's a link here for some TI-89 tips and I'll put this link in the description as well. Um, so uh, using your calculator to evaluate. So first of all, uh, make sure you have your calculator out and available and if you don't go ahead and pause and go get it uh, because following along with your calculator is really the way to go. Um, so here's my graphing calculator and you can see I've put some screenshots in there. Uh, but the idea is when we use our calculators um, to evaluate, we're going to be using a math function. The math button is right under the alpha key and you're going to hit math and then option 8 is going to be what we want. That's going to evaluate a numerical derivative. And so a numerical derivative means at a specific point. Remember we talked about there being two types of derivatives we can find. We can find one at a point, which is what we're going to do here, and then we can find an equation. And we'll talk a little bit about maybe how to get the graph of that equation going on our calculator as well. Desmos uh, will do graphs of derivatives much qu more quickly than your calculator, so that's a great tool as you're trying to view the graph of a derivative um, without actually finding the derivative equation. Uh, but I'll show you how to do it here on your calculator. Um, so when we hit math and we go to math 8, what it does is it brings up one of two screens. Now, some of you may have an older calculator and uh, it might show up a little bit differently. And so uh, later on, I'll kind of walk you through uh, maybe what your screen will look like if you have the older one. And uh, it's kind of down here. You might see this on your screen, this end derive. And um, so I'll walk you through. We'll come down here and if you have this uh, type of screen, it just means your calculator has an older operating system. It still does everything just fine. It just looks more it looks different on the screen. It doesn't have that classic, or it's more classic and it doesn't have the new math screen. So um, for those of you with the newer operating system, let's, let's go ahead and uh, evaluate. We want to find the derivative of x squared. So our function down here is um, y equals x squared. So in my screen, you'll see that I've already typed it in. I'm going to use the x variable, so next to the alpha key. I want to make sure that I say I'm doing the derivative with respect to x. You'll almost always use x. Occasionally you'll have a word problem or an application where the variable will be a different thing. Like sometimes we'll find derivatives with respect to an angle that's in BC calculus. You can use x. It'll work the same no matter what. So if you're doing t or whatever the variable is in your calculator, just change them all to x's. So now we're going to type in the equation x squared. And then we're going to say where do we want to find the derivative at. And so here I want to find the derivative at x equals 6. So I'm going to type in the number 6 and when I hit enter it'll spit out my answer. Now occasionally what will happen is when I do evaluate uh, a derivative sometimes it will return a value that looks funny. So for example um, I know that there are equations where I would do this and I might get something like 12.00000001 or something like that on my screen. And I just want you to be aware that this algorithm that your calculator is using um, does have some round off errors. So we want to make sure we understand that when we give a value in AP Calculus, we always go out to three places. If you trust your calculator to three places, that's your derivative. So we can clearly say that, yep, it's 12. So be aware of that. And as you use this math 8 function to evaluate numerical derivatives um, for values of x, you might get some weird decimal action on the end. Usually we just kind of throw it away. It's round off error from the algorithm within the calculator. So um, here's, here's another way that we can do this. So suppose that we have a function that we have to deal with a lot and we have to graph this function and we are going to have it in our um, y equals screen anyway. So when I go to my y equals screen, if I put that function in there, x 
here we go, x squared. And, you know, I, I've looked at my graph. Uh, I have adjusted my window. I see what I, you know, there's my, oh, there's my parabola. Um, there's a really cool way that you can actually recall that function so that you don't have to type it in multiple times. Because here's, here's what's going to happen to every single one of you at some point in this class. You're going to get an answer wrong somewhere because you typed the equation into your calculator incorrectly. So if you can do it one time and one time only into your graphing screen uh, and just do it well, here's what you can do. If I go back to my home screen and I hit math 8 and I pull up my derivative and I say with respect to x, in the function box where I'm putting, instead of typing in the long equation again, which I know this one isn't very long, but some of them are going to get crazy long, um, there is a shortcut to recall your y, to, to type in the equation. So when you enter the y1, here are the keystrokes that you're going to take. And if you hit alpha trace, that's your keystroke. That's what you want to do. It's the green button. And then F4 is what we're going for. So remember, if it's your function four buttons, F4. And it pulls up this little menu. And these are your y1s, y, that's what I, whatever equations in your graphing screen, that's what it's going to refer to. So if you put something in y2, then you choose option number two. Well, we put ours in y1, so I'm going to say, oh, do the derivative of whatever's in the y1 spot at x equals six, and boom, it spits it out. So there's a nice little shortcut for you um, so that you don't have to keep typing it in over and over and over again. Now, uh, we've got, we went ahead, we found it, we evaluated, we got 12. So here's what your operating system, if you have the older TI-84, here's kind of what your screen is going to look like. You're still going to follow the same keystrokes. So you're going to hit Math 8. Um, and this is a, a screenshot from something that somebody else did online. Um, sorry, I forgot to give them credit. Uh, but basically, it's here's your screenshots from your older operating system. You're still going to put the equation. You can put it into Y1, type it in really well one time and one time only. And um, then you can go and you can do Math 8. It's the same screen. You look at that. But now on your screen, you see this end deriv. Here's what you do. You say parenthesis. You say the function first, so Y1, comma, X. Now that X is with respect to X. So remember, on the in your... Uh, in your, uh, on your paper, when you do a derivative notation, right, it's like this, and then you have this, and then you have x equals, well, this x is what we were typing into this box. So we're saying it's dy dx with respect to the x variable, because there are going to be times when you have more than one variable floating around. And then y1 is the equation, so that's what we were putting in the uh, box on our screen on the newer ones. And then this is the value that you want to do the derivative at. So that's kind of how you would evaluate that. And so if you want to practice typing that in, uh, you go right ahead. Now you can also type in the entire equation instead of using y1, using that um, alpha trace or the F4 function for, um, you can also uh, just type the whole equation in. And then the comma button, is right above the uh, 7 key. So when you look at your screen, anytime you need a comma, it's right above the number 7. That's often something that uh, people struggle to, to find when you're looking at your uh, calculator. So you can also graph a function and find the derivative on the graph itself. So here are the steps for kind of that older school looking graphing calculator. But I'm going to walk you through it here on mine. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear out my y equals screen, and um, there we go. We're going to go ahead and type in this big long polynomial here. So 4x to the fifth plus 8x squared minus 10. Now when I graph this, let's see what it looks like. If I want to find the numerical value at x equals 1.2, when I look at this graph, um, from the graphing screen, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my calculate screen. So let's see if I can put it in a place where everyone can see. So I'm going to use my calculate screen, which I get to by hitting the blue button, so second trace. And then it says, um, look down here, right there, option number six. Oh, that's beautiful. So from the graph, 
I'm going to hit calculate and choose dy dx because I want the derivative. And then it's going to say, well, where do you want the derivative at? Okay, and so now I'm going to go over here. The graph reappears, and as I uh, go, I can actually, I think I can type in 1.2. And look, there's my derivative. So if I just type the number in, I don't even have to scroll left and right. Um, you know, it's having you, the directions here are just having you scroll and hit enter. You can just type in the number 1.2 right on that screen and it takes you right there. So there's your y value. So let's say we had to write the equation of a line at a specific point. If you have a calculator available, you can just graph the function. The point that you're going to use is 1.2 and 11.473. Remember, go three places in AP Calculus. And the slope is the derivative. So your slope would be 60.672. So this is how we can easily take a graph and find information from the graph without actually having to plug it in. So whenever you have a calculator available to you, you should be using it provided that it speeds things along. Sometimes they don't speed things along. Now, lastly, um, oh, and about that too, be aware that you will have things to do without a calculator. So in this class, you'll have calculator and non-calculator questions. On your AP exam, you're going to have calculator and non-calculator questions. And um, you're not going to be able to use a calculator on the non-calculator ones to answer it. So you do need to know how to do things by hand as well as with your calculator. The last thing that we're going to do here is we're actually going to show, I, I want to show you how to graph uh, the derivative. So you know, I used x squared here. I'm just going to go ahead and keep this y equation in here. Uh, I may regret this, but you can actually graph the y equation. So I'm going to go down to y2, and I'm going to hit math 8. And in here, I'm going to type in uh, the derivative of y1. And if you have the older school uh, operating system, you're going to enter it the same way. So it's going to say n deriv. And then the first thing you're going to put in is y1, because remember it goes function, comma, x, and then comma, value. But the value is going to change, so watch what happens here. So I'm going to go alpha trace to pull up y1, because I want to do the derivative of the y1. But now I'm going to say x equals x, because I want to do the derivative for all values of x and then graph them. So check this out. Uh, I'm actually going to turn off the original function by arrowing up and hovering over the equal sign. And when I hit enter and then go away from it, notice it doesn't have that black highlighting. So I've turned that graph off. So now when I hit graph, it's going to probably take quite a while to um, graph this. And remember that at one, you, had gra you had slopes that were like uh, 60 point something. But you'll see up here, it's spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning. And uh, yeah, there we go. So there's my derivative right there that function is still spinning it does take a while I don't recommend doing this on every problem um, because of the time it takes you there it finally it was done so uh, it does take a little while to graph the uh, derivative so um, there's a little trick for you if you need to see the graph on your calculator Desmos will do the same thing if you type it in you just do dy dx and then in parentheses you paste in your function and uh, it'll make a graph of the derivative much faster than your calculator will. So again, um, TI-89 pro tips, uh, here is your pro tip, and um, or uh, not a pro tip, but here's your TI-89 tips. And uh, if it's helpful to you to uh, have this QR code here, if you want to scan that, that'll take you to the TI-89 website. The TI-89 is a little bit more finicky um, with that and uh, yeah, so check out this video. It'll kind of walk you through some of the things that you need to know about your TI-89 if that's what you're using. They're wonderful calculators, don't get me wrong. Uh, the majority of students tend to have TI-84, so that's what I'm focusing on. But uh, TI-89s are incredibly powerful, and uh, if you know how to use them right, they can be really helpful. So I hope this was a good video. I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, learning some calculator uh, tricks. Hopefully you learn something new. And uh, my encouragement to you guys is, uh, you know, always to keep at it and to be, be ready for the challenge of the things that we're going to throw at you. Remember the AP exam and this class are, we're, our goal is to teach you the skills that you need, but then to challenge you by presenting you with new situations that you're going to apply your skills with. And so it's not about knowing the skills and being able to, uh, you know, 
tick off, I can do this, I can do this. It's how can I apply them? So really it's a fantastic uh, way to learn how to approach a challenge and to approach different problems that are going to present you with um, questions that you do know how to do and that you're equipped to know how to do. It's just a matter of figuring out which skill do I need to apply here. So you guys can do this. Keep at it. And uh, I'm here for you. And you've got this.